good to see you all. Thank you for joining us um, in this uh, discussion this afternoon, which I think is, is uh, very important and very relevant to where we are currently as a country. Let us understand our panelists a little bit more based on maybe they can introduce themselves once more, tell us a little bit about what they do um, in terms of music, uh, in terms of music education, uh, and, uh, and the institutions that they represent. And so uh, I will start maybe with the far corner there. Uh, Mrs. Rose Gavitu, please tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do, where you do it. Good afternoon. Um, as you've already heard, my name is Rose Gavitu. I work at uh, Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. Um, I develop curriculum in uh, the learning area we are now calling music, right from the early years of education, what we used to call early childhood development education, uh, primary school curriculum, secondary school curriculum, as well as teacher education curriculum. Um, Probably to relate this to the core mandate of the institute that I work for, KICD develops curriculum for uh, the levels, that is preschool, all the way to teacher education, anything below the university. It is our core mandate to develop curriculum and curriculum support materials. So in a nutshell, basically, that is what I do. Great. Makofi uh, Rose Tafadali. And it's good to have you here because once we talk about music education, of course, we're talking about everything from early childhood up until uh, universities. And we do have someone from the universities. So maybe you can take it up from where Rose has left it and tell us about universities and education and what you do at the university. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gibson Mawera uh, from Technical the Technical University of Kenya. Uh, teaching music uh, there. I've been a practicing musician and music educationist for the last, uh, I don't know, 12, 12 many, many years. Let me call many years. And uh, I, would, I would say is uh, our responsibility is now to pick up from where uh, Rose has, has said in developing curricula for colleges uh, for the higher education uh, learning and pick up from what, what they brought to us and model that for the industry. I'll take it uh, to the industry so that at least people can now start working directly to, directly to the industry. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much for joining us for this panel. Thank you. Please clap for Gibson. Outside of uh, the schools from uh, early childhood, to teacher training and then into universities. Outside of that, we do have music education institutions uh, outside the what we call, uh, I wouldn't call it mainstream, but uh, technically mainstream, uh, who do partake in uh, uh, educating uh, us in music. And so at this point, I invite the director, Kenya Conservatoire of Music, to tell us what she does, uh, where she does it. Good afternoon. My name is Wanderi Karimi and I am the director of the Kenya Conservatory of Music. And I like to introduce myself as a musician who went to law school. Now, it's, it's important that uh, people realize that you're, you, you sometimes don't need to just do one thing. And our institution allows people who have studied or are currently studying even other, other um, disciplines to come and develop the skill that they love. Because a lot of people love music and they want to develop what it is that they do. And that's what the conservatory is. We've been in, um, in Kenya since 1944. So we have 70 years plus of being in existence and 50 something years of being in the in in the Kenya Cultural Center which is where our main branch is and I'm really looking forward to this discussion because it has a, an integral music is an integral part of the new curriculum and I'm really glad that KICD was able to to um, join us today and thank you for coming thank you please clap for Karimi please oh Wandiri sorry <coughs> Um, and then we have uh, Mordecai uh, from the Saudi Academy, uh, which is 
approaches music education from a very different uh, standpoint. And so glad you're here with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, where you do it. Yes, my name is Mordecai, uh, lead singer for Heart the Band. I am a singer-songwriter, and also I teach songwriting in Saudi Academy. Now, by teach, I mean showing people, like my students, like what they already know and showing them what to do with it. You know, like this expression and writing from what they feel. That's exactly what I do in Saudi Academy. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Round of applause for Modekai, please. Um, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get into a panel discussion here for a little bit, and then we'll get now uh, questions from the audience uh, that you know, will we'll take the, the conversation further a little bit more. But perhaps let me start with a somewhat simple, but maybe not so simple question. Uh, to each and every one of us in the panel, uh, what does music education mean in our current uh, status as a music industry? What, what, what would you take or how would you define music education? Because we're talking about making music education relevant. So what is music, music education in the industry currently? Gibson. As I had said, actually, I've been, I've been there teaching, teaching both in the main, mainstream institutions and also teaching privately. I think uh, somebody mentioned uh, there being a gap. I don't know, and we were asking ourselves, why is that gap uh, when, when they, they were introducing the, uh, the topic? And I would say, as an educator, I would feel uh, in terms of uh, the teaching, the curriculum itself, and the relevance, actually there, there is there, this, as you teach, you start feeling that there is a challenge of the relevance of what we are teaching and what is being practiced in the industry. And I think that's what um, uh, probably the new curriculum is trying now to address very, very well to kind of bridge that gap. And I would give a personal, exp uh, personal uh, experience. Uh, I did music right from a uh, high schooler from Form 1, and I did it as an examinable subject. And right immediately after I did my music, I decided to apply what I had learned into the practical bit. I, I started training a, a, a group outside in, uh, for, for performances. And one of the challenges that I had is using the knowledge that I had to compose a piece of music for performances, for, for festival. And the gap in between what I did and what was expected, what was in the industry, the practical bit, there was a very big, a big gap. And I started questioning the relevance of what I had studied and what was, in the, what was expected of me in the practical sense and in the industry. I think that's the gap I would mention there is. In the Mordecai, uh, we, when we talk about the music industry, Right, the, the 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 first impression you know people get is you know the popular music world, right? But the music industry is big uh, out there. We are talking about the teachers. We are talking about the church musicians. We are talking about the traditional musicians, and all that now creates a music culture, right? So if you were to explain what the culture, the musical cultural needs are currently in the music industry, what, what would those be? Or what is the music culture like? Um, I'd say the music now, it, if, if I speak from the musician point of view, the music is divided into uh, two categories. Categories, um, kuna, kuna watu wana, wana cater for, there's people who cater for let me just strip it down. Let me just strip it down. It's people who, who cater for clubs. Yeah? It's people who cater for what you said, church. It's people who cater for um, the live side of things. So it's, it's like divided into, into, into different categories, which now constitute now the culture of what is now, what we are now, the people that we are now. I think... Um, the education of it, the education part of it could be very, very important and key in contributing to culture in terms of now teaching people to, now doing it deliberately, 
unanipata doing it deliberately so that people people do it people do it with with an with a purpose with a sense of purpose unajua nini unataka kufanya for example um catering for the church side now yeah um we usually have seasons kuna time christmas mnaona on television we usually have christmas carols are going on uh there's this time for valentines right now there's been a whole of love songs and what not there's a club season that comes people do club songs so the culture also depends on the music and the music depends on the culture they are like one and the same thing that's what i think about it karimi your thoughts i i think there's a um we always look at the musician part of of um for the education but i think when you have a music education system that works um in its entirety then you will have an audience that's informed because artists want to perform to an audience that's exposed to whatever it is that they're doing so i got into music because at I was in class 1 that's when I started music lessons so for me going for a concert was not an issue so it's not just the 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 music education of the musician or of the learner so that they become a musician but also so that they can become appreciators of that art that art form and and i think um in competency based I, i i don't know what the curriculum has for that but i think the exposure of the students into that space where they are able to also see that you don't have to do the music for you to learn but when i'm walking into an office where the marketing manager studied music as a child they will say okay i want my endorsement to be with modekai because i enjoy music and i love how he sings and how he makes me feel and so vw is going to be driven by modekai and that conversation becomes easier and the greater creative economy then benefits from that um and from a university point of view uh where the music education feels certain um i guess uh, as modekai puts it channels right this this is the channel for church this is a channel for club this is the 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 other channel was you know church the, club church live, club live, live all those you know, right yeah. um uh from the higher education point of view are we able to educate our students to fill those gaps or those channels or are we mostly one one lined or how do we approach music education to turn out people into the industry from the uh, the university point of view uh i'll i'll start uh, with what uh, karimi one of my panelists uh, men- uh, talked about uh, uh looking at uh, the music itself you know expect- expected uh, kind of a curriculum what where we want you to be as a student and i i i i thought about it and felt that culture actually is dynamic and most probably somebody will correct me it's also situational it's what i need it's what is changing that keeps on changing in, within the society and when we look at kenyan culture i, I would feel it's it's more dy- dynamic and very diverse uh, that it has lots of uh, expectations like uh, Uh, I'll, 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 somebody wants to learn genge somebody want to learn a different rap music or somebody want to do kapuka or somebody want to do classical and i felt actually just following some uh, one of the educationist uh, pindro who said uh, we must teach actually the way students learn rather than expecting them to learn the way we teach actually it's not what we are giving them rather than it's what the, the the way they want to learn and what they expect so our i feel our curriculum or whatever we are teaching should be able to fill in that cultural need that 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 kind of uh, we've come up maybe with a style and if i'm not as a teacher learning that the, this style is needed for me to approach whatever concept i want to teach maybe in music then i'll lose that learner and that's basically what i would say purely i was taught classical 
you know, the, the, the British system, the classical music, and uh, African music, which came in, in terms of traditional. Nothing in between, in terms of the popular music that we have, the growing culture, nobody would use that in my world. So I feel, uh, as the university, when we pick up now and trust channeling now this these talents or these talents to different uh, places in, 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 uh, in, in, in the industry, there, there is a bit of a struggle because you know, somebody is almost overly learning something almost new that they will have to apply now within the industry. So there is that challenge in as much as uh, we are trying to now channel those in terms of uh, we do, for example, we are doing uh, BIMAS of uh, Bachelor of Music in uh, uh, maybe channeling into production, sound technology, we are taking others into education. So we building those, but how relevant the foundation has been to build them to, to us comfortably to take them to that level, it's, 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 I would say it's a challenge to us. But now going back to Rose, uh, and in terms of uh, writing the, the curriculum that will fill these channels uh, that we are talking about, and knowing that these channels are what makes up culture, what makes up our music culture, uh, and then we've been told that the culture is dynamic. It is changing, uh, yet it is also situational. Uh, how is that a challenge, or how do, you, how do you fit that into writing a curriculum that will then be able to fit all this and yet fill the gap, um, as it were, in, uh, in, in the industry? With the new or the proposed curriculum, I'm glad to report that it is going to take care of the learner's interests and abilities. As I said earlier, it is not going to be prescriptive as you tell the learner, this is what you must do. We are going to take care of the learner's interests and their abilities as well as, well as aptitudes. What, what can the learner do? And in so doing, then the learner will, uh, will actually take the upper hand in dictating what should we take, uh, put in our curriculum. Earlier on in our old curriculum, as um, Mwalimu stated, we actually considered basically what we'd call Western music, which is far removed from us, classical music, and a bit of traditional music, that is Kenyan music, not even African music, a bit of, uh, 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 not African music, but a bit of our Kenyan traditional music. But in our new curriculum, we want to open up the avenues more and also consider the changes that have taken place in the community as well as in the broader society because we cannot remain with a static curriculum when so many things have changed in, uh, in our societies. So we have to take care of even the new genres of music that have come up to include them in our curriculum because basically they are not taken care of. And at times when a learner probably wants to compose in a certain style, then we have those restrictions of these are the compositional rules. These are the rules of harmony. These are, I mean, this is how you should do things. Because those rules are restrictive. But there are styles that could actually be even a learner's own. And they could actually take that learner very far. And that is why I'm saying that we are actually going to take care of the learner's interests. What are their interests? And remember, one of our core competency in the competency-based curriculum is creativity and imagination. And therefore, we will not sit back and continue doing things uh, the old way. We must give the learner that opportunity to be creative, to be innovative, so that they actually do what they feel they want to do. I hope that I've responded to that question well. Yes, yeah, uh, yes you have, and we'll be coming to that. But Karimi, right? Uh, we have a learner who has gone through, uh, you know, the competency-based, and uh, is, uh, you know, is you know wants to do, you know, has 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 interests in, I don't know, let's say genge, uh, and comes to the conservatoire, right? Um, wants to learn genge on the violin. Yet, the conservatoire is also very, uh, you know, 
strict in in terms of what they teach and uh, and the kind of the curriculum as it were that they use so how do you merge the two uh, and knowing that that the truth said that uh, western music is also far removed from us yet has a place in our industry what is your place in that far removed uh, music of ours we we have um, we've really been working with our teachers because uh, as i said we've been 50 something years in in our in our we were established in 1944. Um, we've been at the Cultural Center since 1961. And so it means, you know, those traditions, you can't, like, change the tradition in one day. But then working with our teachers and our, and our teachers' workshops where we are w trying to get them to think about their teaching, not just in that rigid way that um, you're, you're just going to teach ABRSM. No. You're going to teach... Um, musicians so therefore you have to also work on yourself as a as a teacher so even for us as the conservatory we are working on improving how our teachers are looking at their teaching because um, as he said it's dynamic everything is changing all the time and yes we do have um, organizations and examination bodies and and um, papers that we are supposed to have as teachers, but at the same time, um, our performances, the way we, we interact with our students has changed over time. And, and that, will, I hope, will be my legacy at the conservatoire. And Mordecai, the, the Saudi Academy and, uh, and, and what you teach at uh, Saudi Academy, there was, an, there was a need that, that uh, was there, that was seen uh, in the industry for your Saudi Academy to come up. Uh, and I think in, in, when, in terms of perhaps the institutions that are represented here, Saudi may be our youngest, uh, based, based on what we have here. Um, but you have a lot of students who, who come. And as you said, they are now interested in the process and not the product. So what was that niche? Or what is that niche that perhaps Saudi Academy has that music education is there fulfilling? Because you, as Saudi Academy... And you, as Modeka, even as the, as the lead singer of, of uh, Hat the Band, you've, you've now become an educator, right? So what is that need? What, what is that niche that you're, you're presenting to the industry that propels it and makes music education relevant to our culture? All right. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about Saudi Academy. So there's a, it's, it's a three-term process, yeah? So the first term, you get vocal training. Yeah. So you do vocal training. There's auditions, you get into the auditions, and then you, you get the first term, which is vocal training. The second term now is songwriting, where I teach. So you get to um, interpret your feelings and thoughts into now a song and actually create your own thing. The third term now is music business and you know, getting to know about the the business aspect of music now. So by the time you're out of there, you, you can, one, you can, you can stand on your own as an artist because you know, you, you know, you know the, the, we try to keep it as, as current and as, could I call it street as possible? Because like that's, that's, that's the niche that we, we like to, you know, like take care of because tuna, tuna, tuna fanya from, what do I call it? From, tunafanya from, um, from, sorry, from, from hip hop to, you know, live music to church, like I said, it goes back down again to the categories, yeah? So the niche takes care of the categories and, you know, it just, at the end of it all, just takes care of the music and the culture. Would. Yeah. And we'll be coming to the audience um, in, in, uh, in our next session here. But maybe to sum it up, uh, Mualimu uh, Gibson, currently, is music education relevant and responsive to our dynamic music culture in Kenya today? 
<laughs> That's a hard one because it's almost like an opinion. <laughs> it's an opinion poll and it might, it might land on me. Uh, but as I was listening to uh, the question that you have asked my colleague uh, from uh, Saudi, Saudi Academy, I'm looking at, at the need. Actually, the, the, the reason why people go to Saudi Academy is because of a need that most probably is not being filled somewhere else in the mainstream mainstream institutions. And, and I, I would say the many of them who go there, actually most probably they get that need as a kind of uh, fulfilled. But my question would be, what is the sustainability of that need? How, how sustainable is it? For how long will it be in terms of, for example, if I fall now into the international maybe platform, I, I, I've pushed my star up there and then I'm playing at that level. How sustainable will I be because of the foundation and the support that I have. That's why I would say it's the music education. Personally, I feel it's feeling to some way the need because at the end of the day, uh, somebody who has gone through the mainstream uh, kind of education actually get, get, you, you, you get the exposure to a lot, of, a lot of areas that most probably were not even privy to your own expectation. Uh, music industry, psychology. I don't know whether some of us teach psychology of music. Uh, there's a lot you're exposed to that might apply directly or sometimes indirectly. But unfortunately, most of us want to find an easy way out. You just want to be a, an, uh, maybe a star, uh, an instant star at the end of the day. Yes, uh, you become an instant star, but how sustainable? And that's why the mainstream kind of training becomes very, very important and very relevant. And even in terms of its, the curriculum, maybe uh, adjustment, most probably that's when now we need to follow lead with the, with the, with the, the KSED. We are trying now to bring more of a curriculum that is competence-based, that is more relevant. We also need also to adjust along the way, and I hope, hopefully, it will go along the way up to, to, to the highest level of, of, of education in our, in our country. Wandiri, is it relevant? I believe it is, uh, but I, uh, coming from where I come from, we, we always want to do better. I think there are things that we are doing well. I think there are things that we, we can do better, and I think there are spaces in which we need to fill. Um, for me, one of the most important things is building audiences, and by um, music appreciation is something that we have to really work on so that we do have audiences for the people who have this um, urge in them to study music and to, to share a piece of themselves with us. So we, can, we, we are somewhere, we are not where we were, but I believe that we, are, we have a little more to go. Mordecai, as we fill this gap uh, in the industry, as you said, are we also building the audience and appreciation for audience with our music education from a Saudi Academy or even Heart the Band point of view. Because when, when you go on stage as the leaders, the leader, the lead singer for Heart the Band, right? Uh, do you wear your educationist heart as well and try to educate the, the audience in terms of appreciating the music or do you just let the music speak for itself or otherwise? Tell us. It has to be a little bit of both. Yeah, you have to you have to speak what you believe, you know, and you have to live what you speak, you know. So I have to when I when I step on stage, whatever I'm going to sing has to make sense to me, and I, I have to believe it, so that you are gonna believe it as the audience. Same same way in when I when we speak about curriculum, whatever we teach, we have to believe and we have to practice as well, because you know you cannot. You cannot teach something that you do not do. It's like preaching water, drinking wine. So we have to, yeah, you have to live it. Yeah. And Rose, uh, as Mordecai says, we have to believe, right, what we teach. What are we doing for our teachers in terms of the new curriculum such that they're able to believe what they teach or at least be able to steer um, are an interest that perhaps is not theirs, but they have to steer that interest in the curriculum, right? You, you talked about it being more learn, learner-centered, right? Uh, where it's more competent, competency-based, um, but that is the learner. How does the teacher then fall into, 
into that place where they build up on what the learner wants that perhaps is not uh, what they know or what they feel or what they believe. I would want to say that um, the music curriculum as it is does not mean that it is irrelevant. It is very, very relevant because basically you must have a foundation. In each and everything that you do, you must lay a foundation. Even as you're doing a house, you must have a foundation. And therefore, music education is key to lay a foundation in preparation for the music industry. And therefore, the curriculum will basically be a broad one, exposing the learner to a broad music curriculum. They'll be exposed to Western music. They'll be exposed to a traditional music, as well as the new genres of music that have come up so that they can relate to what they are learning in school to what is actually happening out in the industry. And from there, they can be able now to actually... Uh, take their interest to another level where they can specialize in whatever uh, area they would want to specialize. Um, I said that the competency-based curriculum is more about the learner and less of the teacher. But we are not saying that the teacher is not relevant in this particular case. The teacher here will take the role of a facilitator. They will have to facilitate learning, meaning that they will not let, let the learner do what or as they wish. They will have to be facilitators of learning. And apart from being facilitators, they should also be actually role models to the learners. In other words, they will be there to work along with the learner, guiding them appropriately. So that if a learner has an interest in an area like music, then it is up to the music teacher to work with that, teacher, uh, with that learner so that they are able to achieve their full potential. Because uh, we want to nurture every learner's potential. So the teacher will be very crucial. They'll play a very important role because it is the teacher who, will be able, who should be in a position to identify a certain talent in a learner and to even nurture that talent, develop that ta uh, talent so that they hand over that child to the next level. So the teacher here is very crucial. And as an institute, we have a very a heavy task as far as the teacher is concerned because we are taking them from one level of teaching to another level of facilitating. Less of teaching and more of facilitation. So it calls for a lot of teacher orientation, a lot of capacity building on the side of the teacher so that they are able to work with this learner as they endeavor to develop the potential of the learner. I think... Um from the discussion here, the, uh, the focus now is on the process, not the product, uh, which is now taking our industry to another whole level because with processes, the product becomes better, varied, uh, and more uh, accessible and easier to, to uh, I mean, more accessible locally and even internationally, which is, which is great. Um, you know, we're moving from teachers to facilitators, um, and I'm glad that we're even starting from the bottom, because some of us, Karimi, uh, said she started in standard one, right? If there was no that opportunity in standard one, Karimi would not be uh, here today. So we are great. We are grateful to, the, to KICD for coming up with a way in which uh, anyone with talent, and we're not just talking about music, but fine art, drama, sports, uh, even arguing to make a great lawyer, right, um, is, is a talent that, that is nurtured. And so uh, I think for us as an industry, we are, we are happy with the progress and uh, we will support in any way we can. Over to the audience now, and I'm sure through the panel discussion, you've come up with some ideas, some questions, um, some observations that perhaps you have uh, it's now your turn to ask questions. Please make them short. Uh, make them to the point. Introduce yourself. If you're coming from an institution, say where you're coming from and who the question is addressed to at this point in time. So, over to the audience. Uh, I don't know whether we have a roaming mic. We'll take maybe three questions at a time and then uh, we answer those ones and if time allows, we take other three questions. My name is John Kigada. I'm a leadership educator, um, but specializing in music education. I, my question is, 
it's addressed to, I think, the facilitator. I thought the, the topic was making music education relevant and responsive to cultural needs, the, the needs in the culture, like Kenyan culture, not music culture, or I misunderstood. I guess that's, yes, uh, it's, it's, it's cultural needs. But when you talk about um, culture, and I think it came up here, uh, as music educators, we are filling a gap in, uh, in the music industry, right? And so therefore, I, I believe the music industry in itself, based on the different aspects of music that we talked about, creates a culture, right? Um, and that is the culture that we're talking about. If we talk about the music culture, then it makes about us as Kenyans, who we are today in, in the country today, and in relation to the music uh, industry and the music culture. So I think that, that is how we took it. But also, what we do as a music culture then ex comes out to us as, as even a cultural people in our various diversities. At least that's how I, I, I understood it to be. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, KG is a KA heavyweight, a KA death row, a KA murder case. I'm a rapper. I took a get I'm from the hood, I'm from the street. So in my own perspective, perception and opinion, rather point of view, part of it, I feel like it's all about how you feel. Because with me, I'm from the kid, I'm just from the street, you know. So inspiration, from my perspective, point of view, it comes when our, our friend is shot dead, then I come to this other side of the town. I see good motifs, tall buildings, beautiful shores appear. That's how I feel, and most definitely, that's how I'll write it. So my question is directed to the whole panel seated over there. With me, in my own perception, I feel in a deep down. It depends from the package to the product, then in relation to the whole package and part of it, the whole industry. Also the content, part of Airplay, how it's being done. Because with me, I'm just a rapper, you see? I don't have to go to any school, be told, oh, lower your tones and ne -ne 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 in your vocals. I just do it and come with it how I feel like. So in my point, Atakwa Modekai, I'm glad you're from the East, kid, you know how it's done. So now we about when you feel, when you medunga Buddha, how you're dressed. We don't say we are filling in the gap and it's not original content. So from the airplay to all the stakeholders and everybody involved in this, I feel like there's that distance. Let's keep it, trying to keep it original, Kiasi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope we've noted that uh, question. Yes, another question. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Obiero from the Technical University of Kenya. Yeah, he said something here. It's very important. What exactly is music education? And why do we do it? Uh, that, that, that directed to whom? That is to all the panelists. All right. Second question. The new curriculum. What is the position of the teacher? A teacher's orientation is from the modernist perspective. He's the power. He holds everything. He knows everything. That is the training. How do you do an overhaul and change that? Thank you. Um, Again, the other question. There are many questions, Obiero. There are many questions. Last question. Last question. Law is a praxis. Medicine is a praxis. It's music education the way we are offering it. A praxis. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, let's take one more. Okay, maybe two more. One more. Right? And then we'll answer those uh, questions. Uh, my name is Peter. Um, this is a very good panel. This is a brilliant panel, the discussions and everything that has happened. Uh, I am lucky enough to have gone through what 
the panelists represent. I studied music in secondary, which you were in charge of. I went to Saudi Academy and I went to a tertiary institution to study music. And from my point of view, the most, all of them were really good, but the most, I don't call it substandard, disappointing of those institutions was the tertiary education. Yeah, and it's no. I didn't go to technical university, but I, I just want to. <laughs> I want to understand what informs the curriculum for a tertiary institution because I don't think you are in charge of that. Yes. So yes, that's that's my question. I guess that's directed to Mawira. Yes. Yes. Okay. The lecturer. Modekai, uh, maybe respond to our our rapper. Um, my other brother. I, I just say one thing. Unona, that feeling that you have, Sindio, una, una feel, una feeling, vitu zenye unona mtani, kikam, like una, una experience life, vitu fauti. Like ukona both sides of nini, Sindio. Na yu expression yako, ni poa. But, but, usiwai jiambia, usiwai, for even one day, usiwai jiambia ujidanganye, how need kuambiwa venye unafaudu. Juu ya nini? Kuna wase, honestly, tukwetu, tukwetu are real, sindio? Kuna wase wana do the same sport, na wana do it better, sindio? Kuna wase una look up to, sindio? Ume try ku find out how enyewe wame do aje. Una nipata? Una, una find out, like, kama for example, labda inaza kwa ni Kendrick, kama, unajua, mse, Jay-Z, labda. Could you find out, like, what they actually do? Wana do nini, do afike yo place nye wako, mbaka ni ma idol wako sai. And what they are doing now, you start doing now. You understand? So that ufike kwa the same level, ndi uji advance so manyeo. Jusa, at the end of the day, uki, uki, uki jiloki, ume jilock out, like umejeka kwa shell. You don't wanna, you don't wanna see what's going on outside. And naivo sa, where's the progress? That's what I'd say. So move, taka kujua, na kuji advance. Yeah. And I think that's adding on to that. That is the purpose of education. To broaden your horizon. To open your mind to different experiences. Even coming here for this uh, uh, session is an education. Right? You've opened your mind. You've decided to come and hear what other people have to say, which means you're opening your, your mind. And I think that's what uh, education is all about. To give you different experiences, different attitudes, um, see what is out there, and see how that fits in into what, what you have. I think it is very important for us to embrace or to get to learn or to have a competency we are now calling learning to learn. What does learning to learn mean? It means that learning is a continuous process. And basically, we should be willing to learn or to add on to what we already know to make ourselves even much better. Because for sure, if we remain as islands, then we'll just remain as islands. And you know, an island on its own has no value addition. But the moment we accept to keep learning, learning to learn, you are in a process of enlightening yourself each and every day, then you are a better person. And again, in response to your question that, uh, do we really need that music education? Because I can do what I feel I want to do, or I can express myself the way I want to express myself. It is very good, and that is why like the competency-based curriculum is giving our learners that opportunity to express their areas of interest and to express it in the way they know better. Be it in music, be it in art, be it in sports, be it in drama. By the way, we are going to have drama as in theater as a learning area. It is giving the learner that opportunity to express themselves so that they meet their social, economical, and other needs. However, it is important for all learners to have certain basic things as far as education is concerned. Because remember, education is not all about what you do to either earn a living or to put bread on your 
table. Education is a holistic process. There is a spiritual, there is the emotional. There are so many aspects of life which you need education for. And therefore, that which you just do cannot really sustain you. Remember, we need you to sustain yourself even in the future. A good example is our athletes and even our, some of our performing artists. You realize that probably they never received formal education in the areas that they excel in. However, there are certain key things that they lack in life. Why? Because probably they never received an education in that area. And that is why we are saying that it is important to have music education. We know that, for example, the arts, music, art, as in drawing, designing, some of these are talent areas. You are born with the talent. But some of us were not born with, uh, like I, I got into the music uh, field, not because I was born talented in anything, but because I got to learn. So what am I trying to say? That it is important for us to have basic things in uh, life as far as education is concerned, so that we can even have a firmer foundation. We need certain things to ground us better. In the new curriculum, for example, let me just give you preempt what will be there in senior school. For those who will opt to do the arts, it will be mandatory to study a learning, uh, uh, let me call it a, a learning area called uh, legal and ethical issues in the arts. Because we have realized that this is an area that is uh, a bit of a gap in our industry, right? We could have the the education, we could have the talents, but when it comes to legal and ethical issues, then we have a problem. So our music education is going to fill in that gap. We are going to also have another core mandatory area we are going to call communication skills, you know, to equip our artists with communication skills, which we also felt were very key. So I would wish or I would beg that we also embrace a music education apart from just falling on to talent and saying that I can do my thing, I can, you know, and just be contented with that. After all, if you look at the arts, some of them are short-lived. You can only do them within a, a certain span of age. After that, what do you do next in the rest of your life? Thank you. Music education, to me, is the advancement of one's knowledge of the musical form that's what i would say and musical form is be it performance be it um reading the language that is music for some of us i'm not a rapper aka death row i play guitar so i learned the language of uh, the language of music in guitar and in other instruments also so that that to me is what it is gibson is music education a praxis. That was a question from... Uh, Obiero. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a praxis. Why? Because uh, most probably it's, it's on our side that it becomes a little bit in between because of our approach. And I was, as he was ask, asking his question, like I was thinking of uh, the, 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 the title and uh, our friend was talking about the cultural need. And what really I understood about it, the whole topic was, is uh, the approach of music teaching to what you as an individual already know. What is your culture? Where are you coming from? What do you understand best? best? If you understand rap, then for me to teach you the concepts in music, then I would best, the best I can do is approach it with a rap because it's still a, a part of a thought, part of music. I think that's the challenge in terms of how we implement the best good curriculums that most probably my friend there, uh, when you saw that title in the tertiary institution, you felt, yes, I want to study that. But, and most probably you went and looked at the curriculum and see what are they teaching in between, what are the modules, and you liked it. But now when it comes to the praxis, how you are taught, the end product, uh, your expectations actually, maybe most probably they fell, they fell short of your expectation. Why? Because I'm talking of uh, the best is, uh, they, they, they call, they're calling cultural responsive teaching or training where I know where you're coming from and how I can use that to give you the best of what you want. So most probably the institution, the tertiary institutions are falling short because one thing, they're in business. They want to make money and they'll have to sugarcoat, they'll put those titles 
and uh, you'll go for it. But when it comes to the process, as you had mentioned, then along the process becomes a, a challenge. Why? Because of maybe, most probably, the people who are implementing the, the practice. So that's why you felt sometimes like the, 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 the tertiary education level did not really feel your, your need. Uh, but most probably, I would, uh, maybe I would tell to the audience, look at the end product of the institution and make your decision based, based on that. Technical university, we teach for what? For real world, which is, is education for the, or training, education and training for the real world. We give you that, that thing that will make you really fit into the real world. And, and my challenge is actually, our student will be showcasing on Saturday evening come and just look at them, and a majority of them are, are, are certificate students and diploma, not even the graduate students. Look at what they're doing, and then see the level. See what the end product of that institution is, and then make that decision so that you are able to link what you, your expectations are and what the industry expects from you, and you're able to have that beautiful transition. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's, it's not the, the, the institutions sometimes the, the curriculum or the titles or the, the tertiary level institutions that have a problem, but I think the process itself that becomes most probably a challenge. And my ball is to the, to the new curriculum that is being rolled out. Uh, I would say it's the best that we can have for the country, for us, because it's, it's giving that opportunity to almost all of us. Some of us experienced music, and like you, uh, my friends here, when we were in high school, that's when I could touch the piano of my teacher that used to be locked somewhere. I would play, go and master the, 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 the lock and play. And that was my experience. But now my daughter will have an opportunity of experiencing right from down there. So my, 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 my challenge is let's sustain that for the future because we'll have a beautiful uh, quality in terms of music education and even the industry itself will get to the next level. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we have a chance for maybe one or two more people who have not asked a question yet. So uh, maybe we can take that one there and maybe this hand here and then we call it a day. Please make them short, brief and say who they are directed to. Hi, uh, first of all, sorry, my name is Modoni. I lecture at Technical University. I first would like to maybe throw out a challenge and then ask a question. Most of the rappers I've encountered will always say, hey, I'm good at what I do and there's no one to teach me. So here's a challenge. How about you go through the music education, get the papers, then be the person standing and saying, I am a rapper with the education and I can teach you. Because now universities and other colleges will take you because now you've got the paper to support your skill. And now you will be the one, one and only, to teach it. So maybe that's a challenge for the rappers. Get the education. Be the guy to tell guys, hey, come to this university, come to this college. I can teach you. And then it will build that. Um, to my now leading, same thing leading to uh, what I'm going to say. And I'm going to uh, Saudi, uh, Saudi Academy, uh, Wandere, and uh, Mawera. The universities, me shooting myself in the foot. The universities, uh, conservatoire, we do have a gap. That is part of a skill. It's becoming the big sound. Gospel, uh, contemporary, rap is becoming the thing. And unfortunately, when we are not creating a platform for them to be, you know, well, for them to learn. Of course, we'll teach the music business, but there's no one building the skill. For example, someone's coming in with a, I'm a classical singer, we know how to build that. Someone comes in, I am a keyboard player, we know, I mean, piano player, we know how to build that. But someone comes in and says they're rap, we first of all go, okay, what do we do? So maybe the question is, how do we, as we said, dynamic, change, trying to feed what is in the market now, how do we feed that need for rap music. Hello, I'm Jermaine from the Swiss Arts Council in Johannesburg. And I just had a question about uh, the role of the teachers in this whole process. Because you are presenting a very learner-focused curriculum, which is amazing. But it also means that you need a practitioner that can teach across a multitude of entry points into 
into the music space. How are you going to prepare? What is the teacher training going to be? And how are you going to resource that? Because it's, it's almost like a completely different type of teacher that you need to prepare now from a mainstream music teacher that has been either trained in Western classical style or traditional. So I'm just curious what the plan is around that. Um, I don't know. Mawira, Wandiri, Mordecai, uh, rap music, uh, product, process. We have a product. How do we get the process? So um, the thing that we are learning as, as, we, as we do this for a longer time is the detail is, yes, there is a gap. Um, Saudi Academic saw a gap and they did what they, they do and they're doing it um, well. The conservatoire, there was a gap that we are feeling. But then those are the details. Um, there are other layers to these processes that are not obvious to everybody. Um, by the time the curriculum was being changed, this conversation probably started 10 years ago because there's a political layer to everything that we do here. At the university, you can't change a curriculum if the uh, Commission for University Education is not involved. Um, at the KICD, you can't offer anything in the schools if they have not approved it in, in primary and secondary school. So we, we are moving as fast as we can to, to meet that need. Um, on your question about the teachers and, and what kind of um, people would be able to do that, we are fortunate at the conservatory that um, the kind of teachers that we have on board are people who actually perform. They are with us on stage. They are, they, are, they are preparing our students to be performers at the end of the day. Our orchestras are performing all over the, um, the city. And our idea is that our teachers must also perform so that they know what it is um, that that student is, is experiencing. So for us, it is a lot easier. For the universities and I guess for KSED, that will be a longer um, journey. But that's why uh, the conversations that we are having now and we hope we will be able to, to um, partner with these organizations to, to help in that process. Tertiary education, process of uh, rap education. I think, I think uh, for us, we are more flexible in terms of curriculum uh, writing because we, we just prefer, I'm, I'm in charge of the curriculum in our department. Uh, we write the curriculum to fit the need uh, that is within the, uh, the, 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 the industry. And of course, it takes its own, there, there are those processes until the, 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 the board of uh, the higher education learning approving that curriculum. Uh, but the challenge actually, I, I would still echo what Modoni uh, said, is that when you write that curriculum, who is going to teach it? That's, that's the challenge. You have that talent in rap, but you don't want to get into the pedagogy of how do I approach teaching? Teaching is not just a feeling that I can teach. In as much, I can be good in what I, I do, but sometimes not necessarily a good, a good teacher. Uh, and to, to just uh, answer him, is uh, uh, our level, actually, our training in Kenya is you start at the lower level, you've got a generalist teacher, music teacher, who, who, who handles almost everything in terms of uh, musical training to the, to the, to, to the, young, the, the, the young students or pupils. And as you go up, that's when now you build it to more specialist uh, teaching, where somebody now specializes in according to what now you want to specialize in future. So that, that has, has already been catered for. Maybe what would need, maybe she can echo that, it's in servicing the teachers so that they can handle the new curriculum in a better, in a better way. Mordecai, how do you teach rap? Um, I'd say for Saudi Academy, I'm part of Saudi Academy, um, it's, it's more of tailor-made. So how you come with your art is how we advance it. So you come as a rapper. There's, we've had like groups who've, who've been rappers. Uh, like, okay, a good example is Heart the Band. So Heart the Band, we do poetry inside of the music. So we fuse it together, yeah? So I, I won't, I won't, sit a kata, there's a, there's a big, there's a big, actually a big gap, in the, and I'll take it as a challenge, actually. Because uh, like rap, someone walks into an audition and, you know, they, they do a rap for you, and it's a, an audition for singing. So, you know, it's, you, you don't really know where to place them. But then what happens is, you have to advance, kitu enye um tuwa konayo, una mu advance here, and una advance, una msaidia kui, Qui father. I think that's that's what we should do. Rose. 
Okay, let me start with Dr. Obiero's question. There's a question he asked on uh, the teacher. It was about the teacher is the one who knows and therefore must be listened to. We are moving away from that, apparently, in the new curriculum. We are moving away from a place where it is a teacher who stands in front of the class and basically lectures the learners. In fact, like right now, I feel uncomfortable because I'm just telling you instead of we sharing through what we are calling inquiry-based learning. Forget about that. Too much of academics, right? But what we are trying to say is that we are moving away from the situation where it is a teacher who stands in front of the classroom and basically pours out to the learner. The learner just sits there and listens. We are moving away from there. We are going to use the inquiry-based approach. As I said, the teacher here will just be a facilitator. They will be throwing questions to the learners and giving the learner opportunities either through research, discovery, you know, asking each other through discussions so that they are able to discover knowledge and even to create their own knowledge. So the teacher here will not be the master of knowledge but a facilitator, right? Then going back to your question on then what kind of a teacher should we expect to deliver the competency-based curriculum? Now, we have two lots of teachers in the country at the moment. Uh, we have those that have already gone through training, and we have those that are yet to go through training. Now, for those that are yet to go through training to become teachers, we are preparing a curriculum for them, so they will not go through the old curriculum. They will go through a, curric a teacher curriculum based on the competency-based curriculum that will prepare them to handle the competency-based curriculum for the learners. So for them, they are, we are already in the process. We are actually working on a teacher curriculum framework that will inform us how shall we handle the pre-service teachers. And then for the teachers who are already in teaching, those who are already handling learners in school, then what we are doing, we are actually training them as they teach. Like for example, I am sure you are aware, we piloted the curriculum last year for two terms in a few schools, about 470 schools. Now, for those teachers who took part in the pilot, they were actually trained on the new curriculum, the pedagogy, the methodology, and what is expected to, uh, to change. We actually took them uh, through the paradigm shifts that we expect as far as teaching is concerned, so that they move from less content to more of activities, from less of... Um, too much of summative evaluation to formative and such kind of changes. So for the two calibers of teachers, we have taken care of them so that they are able to deliver the new curriculum. Uh, there's something else that I would just want to mention in passing. Uh, there is this outcry uh, as far as Kenyans we are concerned. We keep saying that we are not involved in the curriculum development process. I would kindly urge us that we put our ears on the ground and listen for opportunities where you can actually air your views as far as the curriculum uh, reform is concerned so that you also make your, your views known to us because I said we do not sit and make a curriculum. We actually go to the stakeholders and we are guided by what uh, they tell us. We are guided by research. We benchmark with other countries and we also call upon the local stakeholders to ca actually come and give us their views. We call for memorandums through papers. If you look at our local dailies, there are times we, we call out for suggestions. So feel free and also air your views. You can also do a write-up to us through the, of course not through me, but through the CEO of the institute to make your views know, I mean your views heard so that they are also considered when we are doing the curriculum. Right now we have only done the curriculum for the early years, that is for preschool, pre-primary one and pre-primary two. And we have also developed for grade one, grade two, and grade three, what we used to call class one, class two, and class three. We are yet to do for um, upper primary, or what we'd call middle school, upper primary and junior secondary, senior school, we are also yet to work on it. So kindly, when we call out for your views or when there's a stakeholder engagement, kindly let your views be known. And especially the music industry, kindly, kindly let your views be known so that we know how should we shape our curriculum? But remember, we must be informed by either some study that has been carried out, our needs, all right? So let your views be known. I just thought I should mention that. 
Thank you, and I think it's important because uh, following up with the question of teachers, after um, you know the curriculum comes out, even the universities, for example, Kenyatta University that trains the secondary teachers, the teaching methodologies are actually trained uh, based on what is happening in, in the primary schools. So once the curriculum is done and is complete, as, as uh, Rose says, then our teaching of the teachers is actually based on that. So the, so the, the, the circulation of, of uh, the teachers comes out um, in, in, in that regard. Um, Mawira talked about technical university, and even at the Kenyatta University, we actually uh, try to develop a curriculum that is, of course, for the industry, but also has a sense of what we know as our traditional cultures, as John was alluding to, into what is uh, currently to um, uh, modern pop music and modern uh, industry today, music industry today as we know it. Um, and so the universities need to also uh, educate um, the traditions or at least get a sense of who we are culturally as a, as, a, as a people, as an ethnic people, teach that. Let people understand that. And only through music that are we able to then be able to understand each other as a country uh, and make ourselves even more stronger as a, as a united people. And so that's part of what uh, the universities do in terms of coming back to John's question. Right? We do have that training from, uh, from, the, from the traditional to actually modern. And this is now a very shameless plug. This afternoon, this evening, Kenyatta University will be presenting music that is traditional, but in a modern uh, kind of uh, arrangement and broad setup. So if you are here, please do come and join us at 6 o'clock uh, for, the, for the showcase. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You've been a great audience. Thank you, Mawira from Technical University. Thank you, Wandiri from... Uh, Conservator of Music, thank you Mordecai from Saudi Academy and Rose from KICD, especially here to tell the industry what the curriculum is all about, to understand the curriculum and to know what to expect, but more importantly, to let us be the, also give that opportunity to tell you as, the, as uh, the curriculum developer what we would like as the industry. So thank you all very much. Have a good evening.